it's been a while since I've done anything political, but I guess it's time to toss out another one of those looks at what conservatism means to someone and whether or not I accept their views. This is another older website dating back to the days of Bush, so some of this is going to be out of date, even though I think that the basic ideas are applicable to any time. The author also provides what he thinks is the progressive view of the same idea, which I may or may not agree with, but which I will certainly address as well. So here's a look at some core conservative beliefs, which, let's be honest, I may or may not agree with at all. On immigration, he says, Conservatives believe in immigration as an important part of American vibrancy. They also believe that America is weakening itself by allowing illegal immigrants to stream into the country unchecked, both because this influx saps America's sovereignty over her citizens and because the illegal immigrant pathways can also serve terrorists. That much I agree with and I support. But as I've said in the past, Immigration needs to be for the good of America, not for the good of the immigrants. While give me your poor and huddled masses might have been a good advertising campaign a century or more ago, today we really only need the educated and the skilled to come to our shores. If that's not you, too bad, so sad, nobody owes you a home where you want it. Come back when you've got something to offer the American people. On the progressive side, it says it's racist to keep illegal immigrants out of the country. For that reason, there should not be any hurdles in the illegal immigrants' path to the full panoply of American rights and welfare services. <sighs> Progressives are idiots, aren't they? There isn't a country on the planet that has no immigration controls in place. If you have no control over your borders... You're not really a nation. And this is exactly why Europe is such a mess today, because they've thrown open the borders to criminals and rapists who don't care about their country. Not just no, hell no. On to the Supreme Court with Conservatives believe that the role of the Supreme Court is to examine state and federal laws and lower court decisions to determine whether they comport with the written Constitution. And even lowest common denominator belief is that the Supreme Court should examine only whether federal matters comport with the written Constitution and to interfere with states only if the states enact laws that conflict or overlap with federal matters. And I completely agree with that. Unfortunately, because Congress and other legislative groups have become absolutely terrified to pass laws for fear that they might ostracize their voter base, a lot of that has gotten passed on to the Supreme Court to create laws, not just to judge whether existing laws are constitutional. This has got to stop. I also wholly reject the idea that individual justices can bring their own personal religious or political biases to the table. Those things need to stay at the door, period. This isn't about the feelings and beliefs of the justices. It's about the written word of the Constitution. Full stop. And on the regressive side, we get... The Supreme Court is to decide what is right and what is wrong, and it can get help for this by looking to each justice's own private standards of morality, to dominant cultural trends, and to foreign systems. Having examined the moral position, the court should then direct policy consistent with its findings. Fuck you. Totally wrong. In fact, that's everything wrong with the modern court. Leave it up to the regressive left to get it all completely ass backwards. Next, we get to abortion, where he says, Whether you're pro-choice or pro-life, conservatives who are being honest with themselves admit that Roe v. Wade was a badly decided opinion that, without any constitutional authorization, represented a federal power grab of something that ought to be a state's rights issue. Roe v. Wade should be overturned so that the question of abortion can be returned to the states where it belongs. An alternative, of course, is to amend the Constitution so that it specifically allows or disallows abortion. 
This is something that can't be a state's rights issue, especially in the modern world. Any more than slavery could have been a state's rights issue. It just doesn't work that way. And this idea that we have to amend the Constitution to allow abortion, well, that's already effectively been done with Roe v. Wade. Sorry, I have to completely disagree. But to be honest, the regressive side isn't any better. It says, abortion is an absolute fundamental right that must remain inviolate. The main reason progressives must win the White House is to put a stop to the originalist Supreme Court justices the conservatives have placed and will continue to place on the Supreme Court. Only a Democratic president will appoint justices who will maintain Roe v. Wade's existence. And this is exactly why I disagree with the party in power being able to pack the Supreme Court. It becomes ideology over constitutionality. The regressive left is a snapshot of everything wrong with this country at the moment. Fuck them! Now, you know how I said some of this was dated? Here's an example. The Iraq War, which has been over for years. Conservatives believe that whether or not we made the right decision in 2003 to invade Iraq, it's a done deal. Our only responsibility now is to fight wholeheartedly and win. And sure, to a certain degree, that's probably true. We made our bed, we've got to lie in it, whether we want to or not. Of course, we have to make sure we're making smart decisions in the first place. And the Iraq war was not a smart decision to make. At least that's something we can learn from, even though we probably won't. And the far left side says, President Bush got us into the war for nefarious reasons, mostly to satisfy his oil buddies in Texas and Cheney's friends at Halliburton. Now to punish the president and the whole corrupt Bush administration, we must leave Iraq immediately, regardless of the consequences to America, to Iraq, or to world security. Yeah, fuck them all. Okay, we went in for bad reasons, mostly because Bush was pissed off at Saddam for trying to kill his daddy. It was childish. But once you're there, you gotta look at the ramifications of your actions and make good decisions. The left isn't capable of making good decisions. In retrospect, we know the whole mess was a complete clusterfuck, but at the time this was written, it might have been less clear. This is still stupid, though. But here's something that's still relevant. Islamic terrorism. He says of conservatism, A. Islamic terrorism is real. B. It is the product of a totalitarian religious ideology that has as its ultimate goal the destruction of non-Muslim Western culture. C. There is no middle ground given its goal. And D. We must fight it. Yes, clearly Islamic terrorism is real, and it's a product of a religious ideology that wants to take over the world. I entirely agree that you can't just sit the fight out, because as we've seen, the fight is coming to you whether you like it or not. Therefore, taking out radical Islam has to be the goal of anyone with even half a brain in their head. Unfortunately, that's not how we operate in America most of the time, where of late we've been terrified to even point to the cause of the terrorism for fear of offending someone. I don't give a crap who we offend. I only care that we survive and we thrive and we fight the unjust and evil wherever it may be. Screw Islam! And then there's the progressive side, where it says Islamic terrorism is the work of a few people angry at the U.S., and especially at George Bush, and the best thing we can do to placate these people is to A, leave Iraq, B, abandon Israel, C, dump George Bush, and D, engage in dialogue with the Islamic leaders. You know, it's funny how when their guy Obama got in office... It didn't stop the terrorists from attacking anyone, right? 
leaving Iraq did nothing but provide fertile soil for the radical Muslims in the form of ISIS to roll right in and take over. It took years to root them out and regain control for the moderates. The far left isn't just stupid, they're absolutely stupid. On taxes, with government is a bad money manager, people make money grow, and lower taxes allow for a livelier, growing economy. The inevitable result of trusting people with their own money is that the government, despite lower taxes, sees increased revenue, which is nicely balanced out by lower costs. Mostly this is true. The government is a bad money manager, mostly because there are few, if any, consequences to completely squandering resources. Whether or not the government gets increased revenue is largely irrelevant because we need to limit the scope of government power completely. They should not be as large as they are. And then the far left side. People cannot be trusted to make the right decisions with their money. It's better if the government takes and redistributes wealth, notwithstanding the fact that doing so slows the economy. Now, it is really clear that the conservative writing these progressive sides is really, really biased. Don't think for a second that I don't see right through it. But these aren't that different from what actual self-identified progressives have said about these very same topics. Lots of them do think that people are too stupid to be trusted with much of anything, that the government somehow has to force society to be just and fair, and that people, well, people just don't matter. So before I say that the regressive left are idiots again, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not paying so much attention to what the author has written, but to what my own personal experience with these regressive asshats has shown me. Oh yeah, this one should be good. Religion. He says that core conservative belief on religion is A. Religion is a good thing. B. It's okay if people's religious values shape their political beliefs. C. It's okay to acknowledge America's predominant Christianity by nodding to Christmas and Easter so long as no one is forced to observe those holidays or discriminated against for not observing those holidays. D. People should be free to worship without government interference in their beliefs. E. Neither government nor business should be forced to change their practices to accommodate one belief system over others. See these examples. It shouldn't be a surprise that I disagree almost entirely with all of this. A. Religion is not a good thing. Religion sucks. It is not okay if a person's delusional beliefs shape their political positions. Those should be shaped by reality and a rational and realistic approach to society. And I really don't care that the majority of Americans are ostensibly Christian, because that's changing rapidly. I want religion gone as fast as it can be because religion does nothing but harm the planet. So screw all this. But let's be honest, the other side isn't any better. Traditional Christianity is dangerous and must be stifled at all costs everywhere. Islam has some problems, but to make up for the damage the Bush administration has done to our standing in the Muslim world, we must accommodate Islamic demands in America. <sighs> yes, Christianity sucks, but so does Islam and every other religious tradition on the planet. They're all evil. They must all be done away with. Humanity must throw off the shackles of religion and adopt a realistic and rational outlook on the world. Screw this too. America. The conservative side says, while America has flaws, we are proud of her since we believe that the American system and American values are the best human systems of governments yet created. Sure, I guess. There's an oft-quoted statement, some say made by Churchill, which says democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others. 
And that's pretty much true. It's certainly not a perfect system, but it's hard to argue that there are any better. And for the regressives, and honestly, I have seen exactly this spouted by the far left, America is an imperialist bully that seeks to destroy non-white people, whether within or without America. Her power must be reined in at all costs. Yeah, fuck the liberals. Enough said. On to government, with the conservative core belief saying, conservatives believe in Thoreau's dictum that that government is best which governs least. Much as they are proud of America, conservatives trust American people more than any government. To them, government is an artifice that can only legitimately govern with the consent of the governed. Conservatives also believe that individuals are smarter with respect to their own interests than the collective wisdom of government. Sure, I guess I'll go with that. Although, I honestly don't trust the American people farther than I can throw them. The reason that the government sucks is because the American people have made it into what we have today. The common man or woman is an irrational idiot and thus elects more irrational idiots to represent them. We need a much better class of citizen, which would result in a much better class of politician. And unfortunately, I'm not holding my breath. The far left, though, says progressives believe that government is responsible for fulfilling all citizen needs in all ways. They also believe that the government's collective wisdom about individual interests is greater than individuals' own knowledge about themselves. Yeah, no thanks. I mean, granted, most Americans are stupid. Most humans, regardless of country, are stupid. But that doesn't make the people that wind up in Washington, D.C. smart. They're just as dumb. They just know how to fleece the gullible. Not a chance. Next, we get to gun control, where I know I'll have a problem with the conservative core beliefs. He says, conservatives believe that the only way a people can remain free is to have their Second Amendment right to carry arms. They like to point to Nazi Germany as an example of what can happen when a government with totalitarian tendencies successfully denies its people the right to carry arms. Conservatives also believe that when guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. And they like to point to London and Washington, D.C., uh, things that obviously they are links to stories that were relevant back then, as examples of what happens when ordinary citizens are denied access to arms. This kind of thing might have been true a century or two ago, but today, your average citizen, no matter how well armed, can't hold off the standing military or the police. This becomes nothing more than abject paranoia, and frankly, it's kind of childish. Now, I do support personal ownership of firearms, but the rampant paranoia that we see on the far right is just idiotic. These people like to think they're Lord Humongous, God Warrior of the Wastes, but in reality, they're Toady, the practical joke who couldn't survive on their own if they wanted to. And of course, he casts the far left as rabid gun grabbers, which... Granted, a lot of them are. He says, the risks associated with guns are so high that it is the government's moral obligation to try to remove them from the population entirely, even if that effort is imperfect. See London and Washington, D.C. for those links, I guess. Sure, because when guns are hard to get, people just run over others with trucks or attack them with knives or build bombs. We see that around the world. Jeez, the left are stupid. The nature of human beings. The conservative core position is, conservatives believe that human nature is a combination of good and bad, and that society's role is to control people's bad influences through checks and balances that prevent people's good sides to flourish. Well, Sure, I guess. Humanity is, in general, neutral. 
Because we are an inherently social species, those who want to survive have to learn to play well with others. In fact, it's only in recent advanced societies where the unsociable are taken care of regardless of their sociability that we start to see mass murderers and open sociopaths begin to develop. Otherwise, they're just put down like the rabid dogs they are and they don't survive because they can't play the social game. And of course, progressives are just insane. Progressives believe that humans and society are products of their environment and therefore perfectible. The role of society is to mold people into better individuals and ergo better societies. Well, guess what? People are not perfect. People will never be perfect. We can certainly make them better because unlike the religious idiots, people don't have original sin. They're not inherently sinful and flawed beyond redemption. We can, as a society, direct how people are likely to behave through education and training. But perfect? Never happen. There are no utopias. There will never be a utopia. Conservatives' idea of multiculturalism is still the old melting pot idea. People who want to come here should buy into the basic systems of values and history, learn to speak English, and enrich our culture with their background while merging with the whole. And I totally agree. We only need one culture. That culture can and should be a mixture of the best parts of all of the people who live here. Culture is always going to be fluid. Good ideas should come in and bad ideas should go out. But the idea that everyone should have their own individual culture that should never mix with anyone else's, that's just stupid. Which leads to the regressive moron position. Progressives believe that every other culture is superior to American culture, so immigrants and ethnic enclaves should be encouraged to remain separate and distinct. Not only that, they believe that it is the responsibility of ordinary Americans to yield in every instance where there's a conflict between the dominant American culture and an ethnic subculture. Now, I don't know that I agree with that first part that everybody's automatically better than us. I think, based on interactions with progressives, that typically they think that all cultures are generally equal, that all cultures are valuable, and therefore mandating one culture over another is wrong. And that's false. Some cultures are clearly superior to other cultures. That's why some countries do better than other countries. While I have a problem with some of American culture, where you can identify a single American culture, that is, it still has produced one of the most successful nations in the history of the planet. And that has to mean something. Finally, we get to climate change. The conservative core belief is conservatives believe that climate change is happening, but they don't believe that the debate is settled as to the anthropocentric idea that it is entirely the West's fault. They recognize that the Earth's climate is in a constant state of flux and want more, less politically charged information before panic begins. They like the idea of alternative energy sources since they not only enjoy clean air and water, but would like to see fewer petrodollars flow to tyrannically governed nations. Again, though, they do not believe in going off half-cocked. And that I agree with. Yes, there is climate change. That's obvious. There's always been climate change. There will always be climate change. But the left's demand that it's all our fault because of a general hate of humanity is just absurd. Should we limit our impact on the environment where we can? Absolutely. Should we go back to living in caves as I have absolutely seen people on the regressive left suggest? Of course not. The more you look into the politics of climate change, the more it becomes painfully clear that there's some serious liberal wrangling going on and not all of the claims are legitimate or above board. This becomes an emotional rather than an intellectual issue and that's where you run into nothing but trouble.
Which brings us to the supposed regressive position, which says progressives believe that humans are entirely responsible for climate change, that it is an impending catastrophe that could potentially end our way of life, and that the only thing to be done is to take drastic measures, even if they undermine entirely modern civilization. I wish I could say this is an extreme view among regressives, but it's not. I have seen it many, many, many times with my own eyes, with college-aged idiots proclaiming that everything bad is our fault, that there's no other possible explanations for why the climate might change, and that we ought to commit collective suicide so that the animals can have their planet back. Yes, regressives are that stupid. So, what does all of this mean? Well, clearly, I side more with the conservatives than with the progressives. There's only a couple of questions where I really had significant disagreements, and that's pretty much when you start adding religion to the mix. Or emotion. Emotion causes problems, too. But where we stick to rationality and logic and evidence, the conservative side is clearly the winner for anyone that cares about remaining intellectual and reasonable and paying attention to the objective world around us. And for anyone who doesn't, screw you. You are what's wrong with the human species. You are what's causing all the problems. Mostly, this falls to the far left these days, although... Granted, there are plenty on the far right who are just as guilty and need a serious smack upside the head with the clue stick. I don't respect those people at all, regardless of which side they call home. And you shouldn't either. Because the only path forward is intellect, not emotion. The only path forward is reason, not wishful thinking. If we're to survive and thrive as a species, we must be rational and logical. We need to do what's best for the species, not best for an ideology. That leads to wars and pogroms and hate. And I think we've had more than enough of that. 